much. It feels so good to be back, so good to see you again after two and almost a half years of pandemic. For a lot of you, the last event on March 3rd, 2020 was the last one. And I'm hearing tonight for a lot of you, you're back at a major event for the very first time. So welcome. I am thrilled about everything, putting on a dress, putting on my makeup. The shoes, I forgot. I, I like the slippers. That's the only thing that... So uh, let me stick to my, uh, to my script, if you don't mind. Um, I want to say hello to the people at our head table. Thank you for making the time. You're all extremely busy people. Thank you to Heather Monroe Bloom, who was the chair of our gala last year. She chairs the board of the Canada Pension Plan. And well, last year, two years ago, she was the co-chair with the CEO of Intact, Charles Brandamore. And thank you to my dear friends, John McKenzie, the CEO of TMX, and of course, Jackie Parchment, the CEO of Mercer, for making it tonight. And they're co-chairing the gala. And not only that, we've got a huge gift from John McKenzie. Tomorrow morning, we're actually opening the stock market at the TSX. Yes, yes, we are. And thank you also to Anthony, who's here tonight, the CEO of the Canadian Makers Association. They have supported our past six galas. So I think it's something that's working for them and for us. And thank you so much. Um, you know, I have to tell you, for a decade, events was the main source of revenue for women in governance. We're a nonprofit organization, and that was our model. And I am so proud to say that thanks to the agility and innovation of our team, we were actually able, during the pandemic, not only to maintain our healthy financial situation, we actually grew exponentially. And that could have never happened without such an amazing team composed of women and men of various backgrounds, various religions, various sexual orientation, various generations. So that really is the power of diversity at work. Yes. You know, during the pandemic, women's jobs were 1.8 times more vulnerable to job losses than men's, according to Harvard Business Review. Globally, women made up 39% of employment but accounted for 54% of overall job losses. There are the women who lost their jobs because they were disproportionately impacted compared to men, but there are also the women who opted out voluntarily from the workforce simply because they could no longer cope. They were stretched too thin, having to deal with the work responsibilities, having to deal with the home responsibilities, because to this day, women spend two to three times more time dealing with the children, the chores around the house, etc. And we've really seen it and, and, and seen that impact during this pandemic. Now, I'm optimistic because the younger generation, the new dads, they're a lot more involved with their children. So that's great news. But I'm told they still don't do the dishes. <laughs> right before the pandemic, it seemed to us that we had reached greater heights when it comes to gender equality. And despite that, we were still 180 years away from reaching our goals, according to the World Economic Forum. Do you know why? Well, because pledges don't mean action, and hashtags don't equal change. Progress is not made by paying lip service, but only through consistent and deliberate action. And this is why we're all here tonight. In the US, less than 8% of Fortune 500 CEOs are women. In Canada, that number is even lower. <clears throat> it's 4.4% of FP500 companies that are led by a woman. Yeah, pause and think of that. 4.4% of CEOs are women. When it comes to governance, close to a third of public companies in Canada have zero women on their boards. And while the number of all male pale sale boards is reducing, well, we still cannot find representation among women in BIPOC or LGBTQ plus communities or with disabilities. The main reason why we have to reach gender equality is not out of fairness of women, who are 51% of the population, 60% of university graduates, over 80% of buying decision makers, but really for our businesses to thrive, as well as our economy and our society as a whole. Companies in the top quartile for gender diversity on executive teams 
were 25% more likely to have above average profitability than companies in the fourth quartile. As the positive impact of gender diversity on financial performance, innovation, employee engagement, and branding is increasingly recognized, more and more companies are working to close the gender gap so that they may benefit from the advantages brought by an equal representation of men and women at every level of their organization. But to aspire to close a gap, you must first examine its magnitude and its root causes. At Women in Governance, we have found that many companies are unable to accurately identify problems or come up with solutions because they've actually not clearly measured diversity among their employees. All corporations should begin by understanding their current position uh, on the gender parity spectrum. And this is why we built our parity certification in 2017. Sunita told you just earlier the great achievements. We've got 700,000 employees in Canada that work for an organization that has our parity certification. That is concrete action on the part of these great organizations. They're actually putting, they're putting together policies, initiatives, doing the real work that's going to allow women to progress within their organization. With the support of our evaluation partners, Mercer, Accenture, and WTW, we have been helping organizations successfully increase the representation of women in sectors where they have traditionally been underrepresented and in executive leadership positions. We also successfully launched our parity certification in the US, and this is why you heard Angela Olden, the CFO of the Girl Scouts of the USA, and thank you to you and your table for coming from New York uh, for this event, we're humbled. And yes, thank you. So we launched in 2020 and the Girl Scouts had done a very thorough job of, of doing a global RFP to find a partner to launch that certification in, in the US. And uh, I'm very proud to say that there were two finalists, one organization from Switzerland and the other one from Canada, Women in Governance. And uh, we won. <laughs> And our mentoring programs with top CEO mentors are also now global. Uh, if you happen to be in Paris on June 1st, I'm told Paris is always a good idea, let me know. Or if you have colleagues there, we're organizing a very prestigious event with the Canadian Embassy in Paris and we'd love to have you. Yes, we are launching in France in 2023 and uh, hopefully the UK soon after. Well, we need to accelerate the pace of change. We know that progress doesn't happen overnight. It is an ongoing conversation about what we want our society to be and what we need our corporate leaders to do in order to achieve our ambitions. Our research is clear. Those who look for diverse talent, find it. Those who don't, find excuses. It is no longer acceptable to blame our dismal progress on a lack of talent or pipeline. If we've learned anything over the past couple of years, it is that our future will be shaped by those who have not been given a voice in the past. My awesome team and I would like to thank you again for your presence tonight and for continuing to engage in this important conversation during but also beyond this gala. Merci beaucoup et bonne soirée.